Sorry, teacher. No. Yeah. 
Now is it audible, class? Yes, yes. All right. Okay, wherever you're not able to hear me, just let me know. So in the last class, we had stopped at this point. And yes, I had told you, I'll confirm about the telescope part. So yes, telescope is included in your syllabus. So telescope, we'll complete it today. So few topics were left. Like PRISM, we had completed the topics, but certain topics are there that are related to PRISM. Fine. That we'll cover it. Very short topics are there like dispersion and basically these are application based portions. Application based questions come from this as well. So now see class for prism we had calculated the angle of division wherever I'm not audible to all any of you just let me know just type it. I think now I'm using system speaker so it will be audible if it is if it isn't just let me know. So we had uh, completed angle of prism. Angle of prism was the angle of deviation we had calculated using angle of prism, angle of incidence, and angle of emergence. So your delta, delta that was angle of deviation. This was equal to I plus E minus A. I angle of incidence plus E angle of emergence minus the angle of prism that is present. Right till here we had covered, uh, we had done angle of prism, then after angle of prism, we had calculated minimum deviation as well for this. Minimum deviation was also over. Angle of prism was also over. And what did we do? Apart from this, we had completed the angle for minimum deviation as well. There was a, com there was a complete equation that we had received that we did it because of it. All right. Now, certain terms that as I've already mentioned to you are related to your dispersion. So before introduction of dispersion medium, you have a formula. This formula is basically known as Cauchy's formula that we are going to start with. It's a very short formula that you have, but here no, the application based questions are much more included in your syllabus. So the formula is Cauchy's formula. This is Cauchy's formula. Now see, for, regarding this formula, what all things you have to remember? Just the formula part, no, that is not very important. The formula, exact formula that you have for it. Formula's application is important. Like formula says this refractive index of any material, any medium you have any material is present. So refractive index is equal to A plus B by lambda square plus c by lambda q similarly then it will be plus d by lambda to the power 4 plus e by lambda to the power 5 like this it will be it will move on. whatever it is a plus b by lambda square plus c by lambda q plus d by lambda to the power 4 like this it will keep on moving all right this formula by chance, if in your exam it comes, then write down this formula. Mention that lambda is the wavelength, n is the refractive index, and a, b, c, d's are just constant. Nothing else you do. You have to write in your paper. Now, but what questions come in your exam are basically your refractive index relation with your wavelength. Refractive index and wavelength. By looking at the formula, what can you say? How are wavelength and refractive index related to each other? Look at the formula. Say. Inversely proportional. Inversely proportional to each other. So N, you can say N is inversely proportional to lambda. So if N is inversely proportional to lambda, it means the wavelength, when the color's wavelength will be higher, if you will be having a higher wavelength, then what will happen to the refractive index? The refractive index value will be lesser. So among all the colors that you have, 
what all colors are there with your colors are present with your so among these which has the highest wavelength among all these colors with your colors that you have violet indigo blue which has the highest wavelength red good sara red has the highest wavelength so here if you move towards this side no towards the red side your wavelength increases wavelength will increase so if wavelength increases it means maximum value of wavelength will be with the red color then with orange then yellow then green then blue indigo and violet fine so violet will be having the minimum wavelength and red has the maximum wavelength remember this relation because all your refractive indices questions will be based upon this only even see why red uh, the traffic signals that are present are made with red color also or any mark danger mark is made with red color because it has highest wavelength it can be seen at a far away distance as well that's why we have it all right so red color has the highest wavelength but if you will talk about the refractive index refractive index decreases in this same order so refractive index will decrease in exactly this order if you mention all right so from koch kaji formula that you have this koch kaji formula you basically have application based questions from this whatever is present no any part that you have from this all the questions are just exactly application based refractive index will be can be asked to you to compare it to compare the wavelengths see some things you have to just analyze from this one part only that refractive index is inversely proportional to the wavelength if refractive index is inversely proportional to the wavelength so see you have lambda r greater than lambda violet wavelength of red color is greater than wavelength of violet color what happens to the refractive index refractive index of red becomes less than refract uh, refractive index of becomes less than refractive index of violet one conclusion that you can draw now see if you take the mean value of these refractive index it means if you combine these two values that if you take the mean value of it means the refractive index of the red color plus refractive index of the blue color and then divided by 2 that is the how you take out the average of any of the quantities the average that you get whatever be the average what you have to remember is for any of the averages value that you have this will be the refractive index of yellow color so what is the refractive index of yellow color around 1.33 1.5 whatever it is so that becomes the refractive index for the yellow color so if you have red if you have blue and you combine this you will get the refractive index of yellow color so this also comes as your simple directly theoretical question uh, to mention all these points do mention all these points one more thing here if you have uh, if you have refractive index relation we did angle of deviation and we also did angle of minimum deviation for a very small angle for a normal large angle we had written it but if it's a small angle that also we had calculated if angle is very small remember we wrote delta is n minus 1 multiplied by a this we had written just look at the formula this is the angle of deviation this is the refractive index the way you had fatma had answered that wavelength and refractive index are inversely proportional to each other so what about these two angle of deviation and refractive index directly proportional 
it will be directly proportional only no see can you not see this relation nothing is in the denominator it is directly in the numerator so this is directly proportional so what will happen if you have a uh, violet's refractive index greater then your refractive uh, the angle of deviation for violet will be greater than angle of deviation for the red color this will be one relation also one more thing can be added to this the application based questions on this velocity is inversely proportional to the refractive index so if velocity is inversely proportional to refractive index the velocity will be what velocity of the red color will be greater than velocity of the violet color this is what is involved over here got it so uh, just this type of these types of questions only come you can keep on relating it with refractive index formula is just one single formula and that formula is also not asked usually in the exam directly you have question application based questions right all right note down this part then we'll start with uh, we we'll start properly with dispersion dispersion is there dispersive medium is there that we do dispersion is an important topic and again from dispersion also you have application based question Yes, Rishan Mirza, where were you? You didn't attend any of the class. Yes, Rishan, respond in the chat box. None of the classes have been attended by you recently. After a long time back, you have joined the class. The rest of the students who have joined are regular. All these students: Akifa, Atif, Fatima, Hamza, Hanifa, Hiba, Huzaifa, Sara, Zain.
Um, angle of deviation is directly proportional to refractive index, right? Yes, Atif. Angle of deviation is directly proportional to the refractive index, right? Yes, angle of deviation is directly proportional to refractive index. And refractive index is inversely proportional to wavelength. So if you remember the order of the wavelength, then rest of the things you can relate. But angle of deviation, this is directly proportional to it. That you can also figure it from this equation as well. Same thing. This is directly proportional to n. Okay. Okay, uh, now coming to the topic dispersion, as I've already told you, dispersion, we have to discuss it. See, in case of dispersion, of first you have to have the idea of what is meant by dispersive medium. What kinds of medium do you have depending upon the medium? So you have two types of medium. One is known as a dispersive medium, other is known as non-dispersive medium. Dispersive medium. So dispersive medium means, I hope you all know this fact that all the seven colors know that are present in the rainbow. So all these seven colors combine these web cures that I have written in short, violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. All these combine together and that forms your single white light. The white light that we see from these tube lights and lights, lamps, all these that are present. This white light, the single white light, this is simply combination of all the colors so if you split white light you will actually be able to observe all the different colors that are present and those colors are exactly in the sequence of what a rainbow appears to be so dispersive medium is what see right now this white light that is coming this white light is directly coming and there is no in, in any of the medium that it is coming or any of the point that I can uh, choose, there is no point where I'm able to see any different color. If the white light is made up of all these colors, then this should, this should happen, no? That all the colors should be visible at some point. But what happens is that colors depend upon the refractive index. Also, it depends upon the wavelength. So all the colors travel with different speed and different medium. Right now, this complete medium is what? Air. So white light is coming. It is coming. It is coming. There is no point of getting dispersed at any point. Now what is happening? If you have a dispersive medium, in a dispersive medium, the colors that are coming, different colors that are coming, they will travel with different speeds. For example, if I take a piece of glass, even you must have observed this. If you take a piece of glass and light is coming, even normal UV sunlight rays, if sun rays are coming, at a certain point, if you shift the glass, you'll be able to see slight formation of rainbow-like structures. Just all the colors that will be formed that you'll be able to notice. So that is what all the colors that you be you'll be able to see. That is the colors have split. All the colors have splitted into 
it's a different component but why have they split it it is because of the dispersive medium here in this medium as the light came from here now it speed gets changed the speed of different colors gets changed and non dispersion medium is what for example air is a medium different different media are there no water is a medium glass is a medium air is a medium you have so many different medium so if air is let's take the example of non dispersive medium so light is coming and there is no point where you are able to see the splitting of white light you are able to see all the light rays are intact only so dispersive medium is simply a, a medium where colors travel with different speeds this is basically different colors travel with different see all these colors travel with different speeds for example if you talk about glass so glass air interface you will be able to observe certain rainbow like structures then contrary to this you have non dispersive medium this is non dispersive so here different colors travel with exactly the same speed of light for example this air air that is present over here this is a non dispersive medium so every particle of the light travels with the same speed that's why there is no splitting of colors though they are having the different values of refractive indices they are having different values of wavelength but since the speed is remaining the same the light rays cannot get dispersed if first ray is getting dispersed first since the velocity is same all the colors will get dispersed with the same speed so it appears that again as a common single light so different colors travel with same speed travel with same speed so best example of this is simply air if you take the example of air air is one of the good examples to take to consider this now a uh, definition of this phenomena you should understand what is meant by this form phenomena this is known as dispersion now dispersion is what whatever you have just studied now see understand this then understanding the statement and writing about the statements is not difficult white light is coming white light is a mixture and a composition comprising of all the seven colors that are present so all the seven colors combine together and form this white light now why are we able to see white light continuously at every point like here i am able to see this white light at this point i am able to see this white light at this point i am able to see the exact white light only because all the waves suppose these are four rays is that are coming four colors of the white light that are coming all of them are traveling with the same speed so here also all of the seven colors will combine and show the effect of white color at this point also all the seven colors will combine and show the effect of the white light only like this so if this is a case you are able to see white light everywhere but if by any chance one of the media is changed among all the media that are present supposedly i keep a prism over here prism is made up of glass glass is a dispersive medium right now only we have studied about dispersive medium and non dispersive medium so glass is what glass is a dispersive medium now what will happen white light will come these rays the seven colors that were present in the single ray every color will travel with different speed because wavelength is different refractive index is different so speeds will also be different speed and wavelength we have seen the relation see speed is also inversely proportional to wavelength 
and refractive index is also inversely proportional to wavelength. That's what we have studied. It means speed and wavelength both are directly proportional to each other. And by the normal formula also, V is equal to frequency into wavelength. You should know this fact that velocity and wavelength, these are directly proportional. If you do not know, write somewhere in your notebook, speed V is directly proportional to your wavelength. Speed is directly proportional to wavelength. This you should remember because again, in your application-based questions, it can be asked. So if the rays, white light rays are coming, right, they are coming and it is comprised of the seven colors and now every color will travel with different speed according to their refractive indices and their wavelength. So red has the highest wavelength. Red has the highest wavelength. While it has the least wavelengths, there will be a difference in the wavelengths that will be obtained. Difference in wavelength is there. Difference in speed will be there. So fastest will come out first. Then slowly bending will occur. Refraction will occur. And then another color will come out. Then again, the refraction will occur. And the third one will come out slowly. Speeds are different. So what now you will see, now you can clearly see red, separate, orange, separate, right? Yellow, separate. You can see all these colors now separate. So basically this phenomena, now understand the definition of this. Phenomena of splitting of this white light into its components or into its seven colors on passing through a refractive medium, you can say, or passing through a dispersive medium, this phenomena is simply known as dispersion. All right, I'll write down the definition as well, wherever you'll not be able to understand. Correct. Let me know. So phenomena. of splitting of white light into into it seven colors you can say which uh, these seven colors are no these are usually referred as components so seven colors you can say, or simply you can say components. So I'll write down components as well in the bracket. Components on passing through a refracting surface only you can say. is called dispersion. Fine. And again, this pattern of all the colors that you obtain, this pattern of the colors that you obtain here, this, this entire pattern that you see. Till this, starting this entire pattern. This is known as spectrum. So the pattern of colors, you can say colored band is called spectrum. All right, note down these basic definitions and we'll see dispersion through prism because prism also uh, performs the dispersion. Also, you have your practicals as well. So note it down, these few definitions of it. Any doubts you have, let me know.
रिटर्न Okay, now uh, this prism is there. Incident ray is falling. This is white light. Now, what will happen? Because uh, uh, de depending upon the wavelengths of all the colors, the colors will split. So, this is white light. This is white light. Now, what will happen? This ray of light is incident on it. Different colors depending upon their wavelength will disperse. Let's say. Seven colors are there. So like this from a single point, you have all the seven colors. Four, five, and six, seven. Just assume I'm not drawing all the lines. So all the seven colors are there. So right now what has happened here? Refraction has occurred at this interface. At this interface, refraction has occurred. Now what will happen? refraction occurred at this point. Let's say this is some point where refraction has occurred. Now what will happen? At this point, again, refraction will occur. Exactly at this point, refraction will occur. Now what will happen? The refracted ray will be again refracted. Second time refraction will occur because prism has two refracting surfaces. Yesterday only, in the last class only we had seen. So this will also get refracted all the rays will get refracted and this will also get refracted so this is actually red ray and this is actually violet ray this is how you get the phenomena of dispersion now see if i take the dispersions angle of both of these let's say red color and let's say violet so if you look at violet or if you look at some other color, let's say red I have taken. This is the angle and this was the incident ray. So it means this is the angle of deviation for the red color, right? This is the angle of deviation for the red color. And if I am extending this, let's say I have extended this. And this was the incident ray. So this becomes angle of deviation for the violet color. Can you see there will be two different, different angles of dispersion for it. Now see, there's a relation of angle of dispersion of both of these, violet and red. That is important and question numericals from it come from that part. So angle difference in the deviation of the violet and red color is known as angle of dispersion. You have a topic that is known as angle of dispersion. So angle of dispersion is the difference between both the angles that have been obtained. Angle of deviation of violet and angle of deviation of red. So this is difference in deviation of violet and red color. So 
difference in the deviation of violet and red colors. So angle of dispersion, this is angle of dispersion of violet minus angle of dispersion of the red color. This is known as angle of dispersion. Now class, uh, yesterday we had seen the formula for the angle of dispersion for small angle. So see here, angle of dispersion, if I write about violet, then it will be refractive index of violet minus one into angle of prism minus refractive index of the red color minus one into angle of prism, right? So if you open up the brackets, what will you obtain? NV or directly you can say this minus one, this will become minus into minus, that is plus one, right? If you open this, this becomes minus into minus, that is plus one, if you write this. So this one, this minus one and this plus one will cancel each other. You'll be just left with NV minus NR. And this A is already there. So this is the formula for the angle of the prism, angle of dispersion. So see what all angles we have discussed. Angle of prism is there. That is the angle that has been formed by the two refracting surfaces of the prism, right? Angle of refraction. The two refracting surfaces are there. So refraction is the angle that is formed between the two plane surfaces. Then angle of deviation we had seen the incident ray is coming and it gets deviated. That is the angle of prism, fine, uh, angle of deviation. Then we have a case angle of minimum deviation where the this deviation has the minimum value. That is angle of minimum deviation, fine. Then we had seen this, that is your angle of dispersion, which is difference between NV and N. And for that you have this formula. Now, one more thing I had told you, that refractive index of both of this, yellow and red, if you take the mean of it, you get the refractive index of yellow. Same thing if you take the ref mean, mean deviation. If you take up the mean deviation of it, mean of the angle of deviation. So you get violet plus red by two, this will give you the angle of deviation of yellow. So wherever you have mean, the, that mean quantity is yellow only. So velocity of violet, uh, refractive index of violet plus refractive index of red divided by two gave you refractive index of yellow. And angle of deviation of red plus angle of deviation of violet by two gives you angle of deviation of yellow. This is seen. Now one more thing that you have within this is dispersive power. This is known as dispersive power. So dispersive power, this is basically angular dispersion that you have obtained and the mean deviation. This is known as mean deviation. This is known as mean deviation. And above the part that I have written, no, angular dispersion, we all know that ratio, this gives you Dispersive power. So dispersive power is what? Dispersive power is angular dispersion by mean deviation. Now this is equal to what? If you write the formula for it, how will you obtain the formula for it? Angular dispersion, angular dispersion can be written as A into NV minus NR. And mean deviation can be written as N yellow. This is the formula for it. N yellow minus one into A. From here, A, A gets canceled. You get the formula of dispersive power, which is represented again by omega as NV minus NR divided by NY minus one. This is the formula for it. The formula for the dispersive power. Uh, one more thing. If you write down, if you want to write down it in terms of angle of deviation, this is in terms of refractive index. No, if you want to write it in terms of uh, angle of deviation, then also you can write it 
angle of deviation if you want to write then same thing del v minus del r by the mean value that has been calculated this was angular dispersion this was mean deviation so same thing and if you write this becomes del v minus del r and what was del mean it was simply del v plus del r divided by so you can write like this also wherever in numericals these are used. So uh, let's do certain questions. One question at least let's do on this. So till the time note down this. One numerical we'll do, but before that just note it down.
Okay, this question says that refractive indices are provided a friend, friend glass for blue and red. So these are the two colors that are required for the calculation of dispersive power. So refractive index of blue is 1.664 and refractive index for red color is 1.644. Very slight difference of just second last digit. Here in blue, you have six, other one you have four. Now see, in the formula of dispersive power, you have refractive index of B minus refractive index of red divided by refractive index of yellow minus one. So I do not have yellow's um, refractive index. So yes, how can I calculate the refractive index of yellow? I do not have the value of refractive index of yellow color. I just have it for blue and red. How can I find out? NB plus NR by two. Exactly. It is NB plus NR by two. Add, add is N and divided by two as well. For the mean, we divided by two as well. So yes, N yellow will be NB plus NR divided by two. NB is 1.664 plus 1.644 divided by 2. This will be 8, then 0, 1, 3, 2. And that divided by 2 will give you 1.6. Uh, it is 16, 6, 5, 4. This you will get. Just cross check. I've done it orally. I think this will be the answer. Uh, just cross check someone and let me know if this is the answer or not. So, this is refractive index of yellow. If refractive index of yellow is there, then omega will be what? 1.664 minus 1.644. Divided by 1.654 minus 1. So the answer, this should come out to be around 0 0.3. Just check if this is the answer or not. Exact answer for the 0 0.03 it should come around. This I just remember, I have not calculated it right now. So confirm whether 0 0.03 is or not. So that completes with your this portion. Only now telescope is left. left. Let's complete with that. Just write it down. So yes, class, on Tuesday, I think I've announced for your test. So complete ray optics test should I take or only refractions test? Like what do you people say? Complete refract, complete ray optics, are you fine by complete ray optics test? Or because this is a very huge lesson, so do you think I should take just the test of a topic, like only refraction by lenses or lens maker formula lens? I think that will be better, no? What do you all say? Let me know. Okay then, okay then. I'll not take the complete test of the ray optics lesson. Refraction part that we have completed, no, which includes your lens maker formula, lens formula, spherical lens, before prism and optical instruments. Before optical instruments, we did the parts, no? That we did. All right. So test Till on that. Till where we did today. Hmm? Patima? Till where we did today. No, no, no. That will. That is a complete lesson. This is a complete chapter. Your chapter is almost over. Only telescope is left. Your chapter is over. Not this. See, Fatna. Before optical instruments we started, we had completed no spherical lens, concave lens and convex lens. We had lens maker formula, lens formula, 1 by F is equal to 1 by V minus 1 by U. Lens maker formula was there, 1 by F is equal to N2, 1 minus 1 by 1 by R1 minus 1 by R2. That formula, that part, refraction, after reflection, before optical instruments. Not even this part. This also I'll take, take it separately. Because the syllabus is so much and then you all do not study. And this time, again um, i think you must be informed already because many students have a habit of directly copying it from uh, one into other sheets and when they have their school exams then in their half yearlies their marks directly decline because in your half yearlies or your midterms in your schools you get the actual marks without cheating and here you are just copying it either from the internet or from your friends papers so this time your camera will be open 
camera and mic will be open when we will be doing the performing the test mic can be closed camera has to be open and focus mode is there in that is available here only and that has been activated already so you all will not be able to see each other as well as your videos will also not be recorded so even your recordings will also not be there of whatever you'll see so only i'll be able to see all of you so girls should also have no issues regarding that no other person can see each other so but cameras have to be open that is compulsory because otherwise your yy or test now as we are pro progressing towards the end of the syllabus now your wave optics is left semiconductors and modern physics is left which is not very lengthy only this was a major major big lesson that was left and that is also completed almost that will be completed so now more of yvas more of tests will be there some students will be having extra classes as well with some other teachers also some uh, doubt classes will also be there assignments you also have to submit but regarding all of these vivas and tests you all have to open up your camera open your videos and then answer whatever because like this also even in the class also you all have to but right now if i, I have exempted but in the during the test duration everybody has to open up your camera so please ensure the settings before the class only whatever rooms are there available wherever you are st studying wherever you are attending the classes please look up for the your room arrange it whatever you want it because during the test time no other excuse will be accepted mm -hmm. all right note it down then let's complete with telescope Yes, yes, Josepha, you can leave. If you wish, you can stay connected and then you can rejoin. Let me know whenever you rejoin. Yes, yes, yes. Test will be refraction at spherical lenses, that part only. I'll show you what all portions know that we have discussed. Just write it down, then I'll show you. Yes, Fatima, optical instruments will not be included. I'll take a separate test of optical instruments and I'll take a separate test of this part. The two classes know that we have done dispersion and prism, that part. That separately I'll take optical instruments, which will include telescope, that I'll take separately. And apart from this reflection you have, which you have already given the test, now the portion that is left for refraction. Uh, write it down, then I, I'll show you.
see class all these topics now that we have covered this was what the reflection was separate see uh i it's better i think if you're getting confused all those who are getting confused you can note down the topics as well refractive index will be included in your test i'll mention it in your whatsapp group as well first somebody wrote uh, write it down as well the refractive index will be included then you have a refractive index refraction through the glass plate that we did refraction through the glass plate no that we did glass plate compound plate lateral shift that part so that complete part apparent depth apparent depth and real depth this will be included total internal reflection will be included the spherical refracting surfaces all the refraction part that we have done spherical refracting surfaces lens formula and lens maker formula i'll write it on whatsapp also on the group is there anyone who is not added on the group yet rishan mirza what about you no response from you at all at least write a yes or no in the chat column if you are attending the class even What about others? I hope rest of you are added. Hanifa, you are yes. Hanifa is also there on the group. Rest of you, Zain has also been added now. So on the group, I'll mention it once. And what about the assignment class from this batch? Very very few students are submitting assignments. Assignments are being given. I'm not able to discuss the assignment in the class because you are people are not submitting it. So. during the weekend whenever you are practicing for this test of off tuesday that is going to happen on tuesday just uh, practice from the assignment also so by this your assignments will also be completed also you will be having this uh, revision also so these topics will be included all these topics that are present all right Okay, class. A break of five minutes. After this, we'll start with telescope.
ओके क्लास सी फॉर टेलीस्कोप ना यू हैव एस्ट्रोनॉमिकल टेलीस्कोप यू हैव डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ टेलीस्कोप सो वी विल बी स्टार्टिंग विद एस्ट्रोनॉमिकल टेलीस्कोप ओनली and similarly the way you had two cases least distance of distinct vision and you had uh, the other case was uh, where you had um, infinity image was formed at infinity so for both of these cases both of the cases that are included you will be having least distance of distinct vision as well as you will be having when your image is formed at infinity now see again to the construction of the astronomical telescopes involves both of the lenses one you have as the objective lens objective lens is again a convex lens of a larger focal length let's say this is a convex lens so this lens is this is the objective lens this is a lens of a larger focal length and a much larger aperture is present so it faces the distant object wherever let's say supposedly object is there so it is and now object will be always at infinity because telescopes are there why you can use you could use compound microscope only but you had the all the, the telescopes because it is a refracting astronomical telescopes are refracting telescopes used to see the heavenly bodies like the stars planets satellites all these so that's why object cannot be kept near the objective object will be at infinity only that is fixed infinity means for your planet stars all the celestial objects that are present for that you definitely have the object present at infinity only all right now we'll take ue also wherever required so what will happen again this this will subtend angle at the objective lens the rays that are coming and the angle that is subtended by the object this is the object at infinity so angle subtended by the object we always take it as alpha here also you will be taking it as alpha now what will happen rays from the distant object will come and when these will come one more lens will be here that will be the eye piece this will be the i piece so i piece is what it's also convex lens only but the focal length is smaller as compared to objective that's the difference in case of compound microscopes you had i piece greater larger i piece here objective lens is larger this is larger this is smaller smaller means smaller aperture smaller focal length fine so this is of a smaller focal length now what will happen rays will come they'll refract rays will refract and again these rays will also refract so at somewhere at this point you will be able to obtain the object's image but again this is an intermediate image why this is an intermediate image because eye lens is also there and eye lens will also now refract it so eye lens will also refract it so at this point you will actually obtain the image that is the real image that is found and if you see the human eyes human eyes are kept at this point this is where the human eyes are kept fine so this is the difference that arises now certain points marking image final image that subtends angle at the eye this angle is referred to as beta so beta is here alpha is here same things alpha and beta the way we have studied alpha and beta so this becomes the focal length this part this becomes the focal length of the objective lens this becomes the focal length of the eye piece right focal length of eye piece focal length of objective lens this becomes the object distance for the eye piece because now this virtual image is acting as your virtual object 
and uh, finally this is when this is the case when image is formed at least distance of distinct vision so here image even you can write it as case one only image is formed at least distance of distinct vision and what is the least distance of distinct vision What is the value of least distance of distinct vision? 25 centimeters. Yes, yes. Good, good. Okay, good answer. Good. Others also. Correct. D is 25 centimeters. So this you have to remember. This is 25 centimeters. Here also, if you take M, that is alpha. Uh, M is magnification. Magnification, which is beta by alpha. So magnification will be beta divided by alpha. So beta by alpha, same thing, tan beta by tan alpha, because both are almost equal for small angle approximation. And same things, even if you name those triangles, let's say same, same derivation that are present. Let's say, let's name these triangle. Let's name this point as E point. So this becomes A dash B dash triangle this becomes a dash b dash e uh, let's uh, take this no we usually we had taken this point as e no here let's take it as o for alpha all right and for infinity let's for just our calculation let's say this is a b this object is at infinity only just so that we can form a triangle because otherwise at form defining this at infinity is difficult now same thing exactly that exact def derivation which you have done no we did a dash b dash by a b and here it will be a dash b dash by b dash e. similarly here it will be a dash b dash by o b dash same things a b dash a b dash gets cancelled this becomes equal to o b by a b dash e. same thing and now o b dash is what o b dash is the focal length of the if you look at O, B dash is the focal length of the objective lens, FO. Right, this will be written as FO. And B dash E is what? This is B dash E. This is the object distance for this, UE. So, FO, UE. This is this OB. OB and B dash E. So OB was what? OB was the focal length. So positive. BE is the object distance. So minus U. Exactly from the triangle, you can see these are the things. Also, so your magnification now becomes F naught with a minus sign by U. This is the magnification. Now put in the value for, for again, for the eyepiece, we'll use the lens maker formula. 1 by F is equal to 1 by v minus 1 by u. We have to replace this. No. Here, see, your u is minus ue. Your v is minus u. We want to calculate the focal length. So if you have all these terms, clearly, 1 by minus d. If you look here, this will be, this will be simply 1 by minus d for 1 by v minus 1 by u will be written as 1 by minus ue which will be equal to 1 by fe focal length of e. so 1 by you can write 1 by ue as 1 by fe uh, plus 1 by d or you can take 1 by fe common if you take 1 by fe common you are left with 1 plus fe by d so clearly now in the formula of magnification, you can write this whole term as minus F naught by Fe 1 plus Fe by D. This is the formula of magnification of telescope, astronomical telescope. All right, this, this formula you'll be using wherever required. This is the formula. All right, note it down. Then one case we'll do for infinity. Infinity, same thing, the way we have done. Difference is what do you understand? Did you understand the difference? Where the difference was there? This is larger now. 
this is smaller and object is at infinity because you are you use telescope to see object that are placed at infinity which will not be able to see directly right so that will be the difference okay could you note it down
C class for the second case also, no, the second case that you have when the image is formed at infinity. This was the case where image was form formed at least distance of distinct vision. If your image is formed at infinity, here this image will not be there. This image that will be formed the image this won't be at the least distance of distribution rest of the things will be the same see it will get refracted this will also be refracted but these light rays will never meet because image is formed at infinity so this will be the difference again now see you can see the difference o b dash is what o b dash is still f naught right but B dash E, B dash E is the focus, F E. You will not use U E because now you will use F E. Since image now will be at the focus because your image, object will be at the focus because your image is formed at infinity. So a slight change will come in the derivation. Rest of the things will be the same till here. At this point, you will be having it directly as F E. Minus Fe directly will be having at it as minus Fe. So your formula, final formula will be m is equal to minus Fe by E. So no need to write the things that are written below. Just quickly copy it down till here. This part that you have. And no need to now write down this lens formula. This is final answer. From here, no, no need to write it, this part. Till here only write it. Because this, is this, is, this was included for the above part. Just quickly make the ray diagram and text me done once you have completed it. Questions of this and a small, I think half an hour more class will be not even half an hour, 15 to 20 minutes will be required to just sum up this lesson. Once we we'll sum up just with telescopes are left and the questions are there, then we can start with a new topic. But till the time, revise refraction.
teacher, please. Um, Okay, teacher, you can scroll back down. Thank you. Just text done in the chat column once you have completed it. And any doubts regarding the topic that I have told you for the test, I'll write it on the WhatsApp group as well. But any doubts, any queries you have, just send me it on WhatsApp. Okay, okay. All those who have done, you all can leave. Thank you so much, class. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, teacher.